in these last years a virgin called Mary, of the lineage of David, of the tribe of Judah, was visited by the angel Gabriel from God. This virgin, living in our holiness without any offense, being blameless and abiding in prayer with fastings, being one day alone, there entered into her chamber the angel Gabriel, and he saluted her, saying, God be with thee, O Mary. This first chapter is contained the annunciation of the angel Gabriel to the Virgin Mary concerning the birth of Virgin was affrighted at the appearance of the angel. But the angel comforted her saying, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, who hath chosen thee to be mother of a prophet, whom he will send to the people of Israel in order that they may walk in his laws with truth of heart. The Virgin answered, No how shall I bring forth sons, seeing I know not a man? The angel answered, O Mary, God who made man without a man is able to generate in thee man without a man, because with him nothing is impossible. Mary answered, I know that God is almighty, therefore his will be done. The angel answered, No be conceived in thee the prophet, whom thou shalt name Jesus, and thou shalt keep him from wine and from strong drink and from every unclean meat, because the child is an holy one of God. Mary bowed herself with humility, saying, Behold the handmaid of God, be it done according to thy word. The angel departed, and the virgin glorified God, saying, No, O my soul, the greatness of God, and exult, my spirit, in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden, in so much that I shall be called blessed by all the nations, for he that is mighty hath made me great, and blessed be his holy name. For his mercy extendeth from generation to generation of them that fear him. Mighty hath he made his hand, and he hath scattered the proud in the imagination of his heart. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble. Him who hath been hungry hath he filled with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. For he keepeth in memory the promises made to Abraham and to his son for ever. May having known the will of God, fearing the people, lest they should take offense at her being great with child, and should stone her as guilty of fornication, chose a companion of her own lineage, a man by name called Joseph, of blameless life, for he as a righteous man feared God, and served him with fastings and prayers, living by the works of his hands, for he was a carpenter. Such a man the virgin knowing, chose him for her companion and revealed to him the divine counsel. Joseph being a righteous man, when he perceived that Mary was great with child, was minded to put her away because he feared God. Behold, whilst he slept, he was rebuked by the angel of God saying, O Joseph, why art thou minded to put away Mary thy wife? Know that whatsoever hath been wrought in her hath all been done by the will of God. The virgin shall bring forth a son, whom thou shalt call by the name Jesus, whom thou shalt keep from wine and strong drink and from every unclean meat, because he is an holy one of God from his mother's womb. He is a prophet of God sent unto the people of Israel, in order that he may convert Judah to his heart, and that Israel may walk in the law of the Lord, as it is written in the law of Moses. He shall come with great power, which God shall give him and shall work great miracles, whereby many shall be saved. Joseph, arising from sleep, gave thanks to God, and abode with Mary all his life, serving God with all sincerity. He reigned at that time in Judea Herod, by decree of Caesar Augustus, and Pilate was governor in the priesthood of Annas and Cleophas. Wherefore, by decree of Augustus, all the world was enrolled, Wherefore each one went to his own country, and they presented themselves by their own tribes to be enrolled. Joseph accordingly departed from Nazareth, a city of Galilee, with Mary his wife, great with child, to go to Bethlehem, for that it was his city, he being of the lineage of David, in order that he might be enrolled according to the decree of Caesar. Joseph having arrived at Bethlehem, for that the city was small, and great the multitude of them that were strangers there, he found no place, 
wherefore he took lodging outside the city in a lodging made for a shepherd's shelter. While Joseph abode there the days were fulfilled for Mary to bring forth. The virgin was surrounded by a light exceeding bright, and brought forth her son without pain, whom she took in her arms, and wrapping him in swaddling clothes, laid him in the manger, because there was no room in the inn. There came with gladness a great multitude of angels to the inn, blessing God and announcing peace to them that fear God. Mary and Joseph praised the Lord for the birth of Jesus, and with greatest joy nurtured him. At time the shepherds were watching over their flock, as is their custom. And, behold, they were surrounded by an exceeding bright light, out of which appeared to them an angel, who blessed God. The shepherds were filled with fear by reason of the sudden light and the appearance of the angel, Behold, I announce to you a great joy, for there is born in the city of David a child who is a prophet of the Lord, who bringeth great salvation to the house of Israel. The child ye shall find in the manger, with his mother, who blesseth God. And when he had said this there came a great multitude of angels blessing God, announcing peace to them that have good will. When the angels were departed, the shepherds spake among themselves, saying, Let us go even unto Bethlehem, and see the word which God by his angel hath announced to us. There came many shepherds to Bethlehem seeking the newborn babe, and they found outside the city the child that was born, according to the word of the angel, lying in the manger. They therefore made obeisance to him, and gave to the mother that which they had, announcing to her what they had heard and seen. Mary therefore kept all these things in her heart, and Joseph likewise, giving thanks to God. The shepherds returned to their flocks, announcing to everyone how great a thing they had seen. And so the whole hill country of Judea was filled with fear, and every man laid up this word in his heart, saying, What, think we, shall this child be? When days were fulfilled according to the law of the Lord, as it is written in the book of Moses, they took the child and carried him to the temple to circumcise him. And so they circumcised the child, and gave him the name Jesus, as the angel of the Lord had said before he was conceived in the womb. Mary and Joseph perceived that the child must needs be for the salvation and ruin of many. Wherefore they feared God and kept the child with fear of God. The reign of Herod, king of Judea, when Jesus was born, three magi in the parts of the east were observing the stars of heaven. Whereupon appeared to them a star of great brightness, wherefore having concluded among themselves, they came to Judea, guided by the star, which went before them, and having arrived at Jerusalem they asked where was born the king of the Jews. And when Herod heard this he was affrighted, and all the city was troubled. Herod therefore called together the priests and the scribes, saying, Where should Christ be born? They answered that he should be born in Bethlehem. For thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, art not little among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come forth a leader, who shall lead my people Israel. Herod accordingly called together the Magi, and asked them concerning their coming, who answered that they had seen a star in the east, which had guided them thither, wherefore they wished with gifts to worship this new king manifested by his star. And said Herod, Go to Bethlehem and search out with all diligence concerning the child, and when ye have found him, come and tell it to me, because I also would fain come and worship him. And this he spake deceitfully. Magi therefore departed out of Jerusalem, and lo, the star which appeared to them in the east went before them. Seeing the star the Magi were filled with gladness. And so having come to Bethlehem, outside the city, they saw the star standing still above the inn where Jesus was born. The Magi therefore went thither, and entering the dwelling found the child with his mother, and bending down they did obeisance to him. And the Magi presented unto him spices, with silver and gold, recounting to the virgin all that they had seen. Whereupon, while sleeping, 
they were warned by the child not to go to Herod. So departing by another way they returned to their own home, announcing all that they had seen in Judea. Herod seeing that the Magi did not return, believed himself mocked at them, whereupon he determined to put to death the child that was born. But behold while Joseph was sleeping there appeared to him the angel of the Lord, saying, Arise up quickly, and take the child with his mother and go into Egypt, for Herod will left to slay him. Joseph arose with great fear, and took Mary with the child, and they went into Egypt, and there they abode until the death of Herod, who, believing himself derided of the Magi, sent his soldiers to slay all the newborn children in Bethlehem. The soldiers therefore came and slew all the children that were there, as Herod had commanded them. Whereby were fulfilled the words of the prophet, saying, Lamentation and great weeping are there in Ramah. Rachel lamenteth for her sons, but consolation is not given her because they are not. When Herod was dead, behold the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph, saying, Return into Judea, for they are dead that will the death of the child. Joseph therefore took the child with Mary, he having come to the age of seven years, and came to Judea. Whence, hearing that Archelaus, son of Herod, was reigning in Judea, he went into Galilee, fearing to remain in Judea. And they went to dwell at Nazareth. The child grew in grace and wisdom before God and before men. Jesus, having come to the age of twelve years, went up with Mary and Joseph to Jerusalem to worship there according to the law of the Lord written in the book of Moses. When their prayers were ended they departed, having lost Jesus, because they thought that he was returned home with their kinsfolk. Mary therefore returned with Joseph to Jerusalem, seeking Jesus among kinsfolk and neighbors. The third day they found the child in the temple, in the midst of the doctors, disputing with them concerning the law. And everyone was amazed at his questions and answers, saying, How can there be such doctrine in him, seeing he's so small and hath not learned to read? He reproved him, saying, Son, what hast thou done to us? Behold I and thy father have sought thee for three days sorrowing. Jesus answered, Know ye not that the service of God ought to come before father and mother? Jesus then went down with his mother and Joseph to Nazareth, and was subject to them with humility and reverence. Jesus having come to the age of thirty years, as he himself said unto me, went up to Mount Olives with his mother to gather olives. Then at midday as he was praying, when he came to these words, Lord, with mercy, he was surrounded by an exceeding bright light and by an infinite multitude of angels, who were saying, Blessed be God. The angel Gabriel presented to him as it were a shining mirror, a book, which descended into the heart of Jesus, in which he had knowledge of what God hath done and what hath said and what God willeth and so much that everything was laid bare and open to him. As he said unto me, Believe, Barnabas, that I know every prophet with every prophecy, in so much that whatever I say the whole hath come forth from that book. Jesus, having received this vision, and knowing that he was a prophet sent to the house of Israel, revealed all to Mary his mother, telling her that he needs must suffer great persecution for the honor of God, and that he could not any longer abide with her to serve her. Whereupon, having heard this, Mary answered, Son, ere thou waste born all was announced to me. Wherefore blessed be the holy name of God. Jesus departed therefore that day from his mother to attend to his prophetic office. Jesus descending from the mountain to come into Jerusalem, met a leper who by divine inspiration knew Jesus to be a prophet. Therefore, with tears he prayed him, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus answered, What wilt thou, brother, that I should do unto thee? The leper answered, Lord, give me health. Jesus reproved him, saying, Thou art foolish? Pray to God who created thee and he will give thee health. For I am a man, as thou art. The leper answered, I know that thou, Lord, art a man, but an holy one of the Lord. 
Wherefore pray thou to God and he will give me health. Then Jesus, sighing, said, Lord God Almighty, for the love of thy holy prophets give health to this sick man. Then, having said this, he said, touching the sick man with his hands in the name of God, O brother, receive thy health. And when he had said this the leprosy was cleansed, and so much that the flesh of the leper was left unto him like that of a child. Seeing which namely, that he was healed, the leper with a loud voice cried out, Come hither, Israel, to receive the prophet whom God sendeth unto thee. Jesus prayed him, saying, Brother, hold thy peace and say nothing. But the more he prayed him the more he cried out, saying, Behold the prophet! Behold the Holy One of God! At which words many that were going out of Jerusalem ran back, and entered with Jesus into Jerusalem, recounting that which God through Jesus had done unto the leper. The whole city of Jerusalem was moved by these words, wherefore they all ran together to the temple to see Jesus, who had entered therein to pray, so that they could scarce be contained there. Therefore the priests besought Jesus, saying, This people desireth to see thee and hear thee. Therefore ascend to the pinnacle, and if God give thee a word speak it in the name of the Lord. They ascended Jesus to the place whence the scribes were wont to speak. And having beckoned with a hand for silence, he opened his mouth, saying, Blessed be the holy name of God, who of his goodness and mercy will to create his creatures that they might glorify him. Blessed be the holy name of God, who created the splendor of all the saints and prophets before all things to send him for the salvation of the world, as he spake by his servant David, saying, Before Lucifer in the brightness of the saints I created thee. Blessed be the holy name of God, who created the angels that they might serve him. And blessed be God, who punished and reprobated Satan and his followers, who would not reverence him whom God will left to be reverenced. Blessed be the holy name of God, who created man out of the clay of the earth, and sent him over his works. Blessed be the holy name of God, who drove man out of paradise for having transgressed his holy precept. Blessed be the holy name of God, who with mercy looked upon the tears of Adam and Eve, first parents of the human race. Blessed be the holy name of God, who justly punished Cain the fratricide sent the deluge upon the earth, burned up three wicked cities, scourged Egypt, overwhelmed Pharaoh in the Red Sea, scattered the enemies of his people, chastised the unbelievers, and punished the impenitent. Blessed be the holy name of God, who with mercy looked upon his creatures, and therefore sent them his holy prophets, that they might walk in truth and righteousness before him, who delivered his servants from every evil, and gave them this land as he promised to our father Abraham and to his son forever. Then by his servant Moses he gave us his holy law, that Satan should not deceive us, and he exalted us above all other peoples. But, brethren, what do we, today, that we be not punished for our sins? And Jesus with greatest vehemence rebuked the people for that they had forgotten the word of God, and gave themselves only to vanity, he rebuked the priests for their negligence in God's service and for their worldly greed. He rebuked the scribes because they preached vain doctrine, and forsook the law of God. He rebuked the doctors because they made the law of God of none effect through their traditions. And in such wise did Jesus speak to the people, that all wept, from the least to the greatest, crying mercy, and beseeching Jesus that he would pray for them, save only their priests and leaders, who on that day conceived hatred against Jesus for having thus spoken against the priests, scribes, and doctors. And they meditated upon his death, but for fear of the people, who had received him as a prophet of God, they spake no word.